working with a sine x and b cos x, so like some sines and some coses, is quite difficult for all sorts of things, like solving equations is difficult. If you've got this equals 2, it's really not clear what you're supposed to do to solve that. So what we can do is to smush these two together, these two terms, into this nice one term, and then we've only got one term, albeit with a more complicated angle, but we've only got one thing to deal with, and then it makes equation solving easier, and it makes all sorts of things easier. So we're going to be smushing them together into this shape, our cos. Now it doesn't need to be cos, it could be sine, and it doesn't need to be plus, it could be minus. And that's a nice, easy shape to work with. So that's why we're going to be doing it. You've got some sines and some coses, and you want to squish them together to make one cosine, and then whatever that equals is whatever this equals, and then it's just much easier to work with. And the other thing we're going to use it for is to find maximums and minimums of functions. So it's to solve equations and find max and mins. In the specific situation where you've got some sines and some coses. So this one here, let's go ahead and use sine for this. The question will always tell you, not because it matters, it could be sine or cos, doesn't matter, but the examiner will want everybody doing the same one so that it's easier to mark and everybody's using the same level of difficulty. So in this case, I will use sine. So I've got five sine theta minus six cos theta, and I'm going to write it in the form R sine theta minus alpha. Right, expand out the right hand side is the first thing we're going to do. And now we're going to compare with the original. So look, they're really, really similar what we've got here. Let's use some underlining to help. Here we've got a sine theta and here we've got a sine theta. So the amount of sine theta here must equal the amount of sine theta here, which means r cos alpha must equal 5. Okay, what have we got here? We've got a minus and a minus, so they match up. Here we've got a cos theta. Here we've got a cos theta. So the amount of cos theta here, which is 6, we can ignore the minus because they match, must equal the r sine alpha. And that allows us to create tan alpha by putting this one on top of this one and cancelling the r's. Okay, we're working in degrees here. So let's just check them in degrees. Where am I? Exit. Um, oh, I need a new battery. Yes, degrees, good. Okay, so let's do shift tan of 6 over 5 and then we get our alpha. So alpha is 50.19442891, but we're going to work to three significant figures, so 50.2. Okay, so we've got alpha, and once we've got R, then we're done, because, well, we're not done with this question, but we're trying to smush these two together to make this one, and the only bits that are missing is the R and the alpha, and I've just found the alpha. R, super duper easy, all you have to do is do Pythagoras on those two numbers, the five and the six, so we're just going to literally do 5 squared plus 6 squared square rooted. So that'll be root 61. Sometimes, no, not sometimes, once I saw them ask for this to two decimal places, but it's almost always needs to be exact. Okay, so we're done. We've found the R, we've found the alpha. That means we know how to smush these two together to make one thing, and that's going to make this a lot, lot easier. But you must stop at this point and check. You must. Because you're going to be using this. That would never be a whole question. You're going to be using it here. And if anything's gone wrong, which it might have done, then every, all your accuracy marks here are lost. So it's really, really important to check. So let's put it in here because it's so important. How do we check? We take the left hand side, five sine theta minus six cos theta. We write down what we think it equals, root 61 sine theta minus 50.2. And then we get our calculator. It's so worth putting the time in for this. And we're gonna type this in using any value of theta at all. I'm gonna use 2.5, any value like, and that comes out to be that. Let's check what it comes out to be if we use our supposedly correct answer. Sine. I use theta as 2.5, but you can use whatever you like. 
Yes, the same. Not exactly the same look, not exactly the same, but that is because that's for two reasons. One, I used 50.2 instead of blah, 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 blah. And the other reason is that I used 2.5, which is not the most brilliant idea, really. This is in degrees and degrees, 2.5 degrees, whoop, tiny. So radians, yeah, 2.5 radians is like a fair old chunk of angle, but 2.5 degrees is pretty tiny. So it might have been a bit better if I'd chosen like 30 degrees or 42 degrees or something like that. But anyway, that's I'm convinced by that, that they're the same and that I'm correct so far. Right, now we're gonna work on finding the maximum minimum. Now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is create the baby. And um, this is something that came out of actually a Taylor Tutors lesson. And I thought it was so good that now I am calling it that. So this is the baby. What you do is I use red so that you can see it. You go round the word cos or the word sign, because it would be cos or sign, depending on how you smush them together to make that one. And then you go round the bracket that forces you to go up a little bit and then round the bracket at the end. So anything at the front here is gonna be ignored, but you're gonna go up and create this shape. Now, that's where baby came from, because we were discussing what this looked like, and people thought it looked like a baby all wrapped up. You might be thinking that looks nothing like a baby, like its head is there, and that's it, bum and everything, and all, all tucked up like babies are in a blanket. So anyway, you can call it whatever you like. We called it baby, but you create that, okay? And then in the function, that baby either is naught or one or minus one, that will t show you the minimum and the maximum. You need to test those three and see what happens. So let's look at our function here. And you can see what I'm going on about. Okay, one plus. Right, now we've got five sine theta minus six cos theta all squared. But five sine theta minus six cos theta is root 61 sine theta minus 50.2. So I'm not going to write five sine theta minus six cos theta. I'm going to write in brackets, I'm going to write root 61 sine theta minus 50.2, because I know that's the same thing. Then that squared on the outside is going to go here. Okay, let's make the baby. Here's the baby. Boop, baby, like that. Colour it all in, cross it all out, don't let it throw you with what's going on. Now we're going to try three different things. We're going to try the baby is naught and see what we get. Then we would get H is 2 over 1 plus, now we've got root 61 times 0, which is 0, 0 squared is 0, so 1 plus 0, so 2 over 1, which is 2. What about if the baby is 1? Then we would get h is 2 over 1 plus, the baby's 1, so this is root 61, and then it's squared, so we get 61. This is 2 over 62 or one over 31. What about if the baby is minus one? I don't know why I put brackets around it, but anyway, baby is minus one, then H is gonna be two over one plus, now we've got root 61 times minus one, because the baby is minus one, that's minus root 61, but I'm gonna square it, minus and minus cancel, root square roots cancel, so we get 61, so this is gonna be one over 31 as well. So which of these three is the biggest? Clearly that one. Two is the biggest and both of these are the same minimum. So I could get the minimum, one over 31, either by having this thing in the baby is one or this thing in the baby is minus one. But in this question, I wanted the max and I've just found it. The max is two. How easy is that? Okay. Now we need to find out when that max occurs. The maximum is 2. It occurs when the baby is 0. So let's write down what our baby was. That was the baby. And we need that to be 0 for the maximum. So we do inverse sine. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to make a substitution. Y is theta minus 50.2. We're going to solve sine y is 0. That is going to give us y equals 0. What else? Pi. No, no, not pi. We're in degrees. 180. 360, blah, blah, blah. Now we're gonna undo the substitution. We're gonna do theta is y plus 50.2. 
and then we're going to add 50.2 to all of these. So theta is 50.2 or 180, add 50.2, which I can't do in my head. You're probably laughing at me now. 230.2 and so on. And the question asked us for the first two values of theta for which the maximum is obtained, and these are the first two. Now, how are we going to check it? Okay, this is the very last thing, and you can only really check it easily if you've got a graphical calculator. If you've got a graphical calculator, then you can literally type in this function and ask the calculator where it's maximum and minimum. So I won't show you all of it, because if you've got this calculator, I'm sure you already know, but you go menu, and then you go into your graph menu, which is there. And then, oh, I'm in parametrics. Type y equals, you won't be in parametrics. So here is the graph of, um, I've typed it in there, this function here, I've just typed it in and told it to draw it. And then to get the maximum, you can see these maximums here, to get the maximum you go shift G solve like that and then you say you want the maximum and then it finds the maximum for you there. There's the maximum, X is 50.2, Y is two, hooray. That's what we said, 50.2, two. What about the next maximum? So I just go to the right and it will find the next maximum. There it is. Y is still two, but now X is 230.2, which is what we got. So we know we're right. Obviously, you can only use that check if you've got a graphical calculator. But if you have, it's definitely a really good and quick check to do.